All right, here we are. All right, here we are on the live stream, Culture of Currency. Thought this would be a fun thing to get you out on a Saturday morning listening to some silver. So go ahead and like and subscribe, and let's go live. As you can see here, I've popped out some silver here for you to look at. Uh, all kinds of stuff from around the world, just some stuff I pulled. Nothing crazy here, but things you might like, things you might want to talk about if you want. But the first thing that I noticed over this weekend happened to be on the Atmex website. So if you've not been to Atmex, you might want to check that out uh, because I noticed a very, very big change to something. So when you go here on the Atmex website, what you will see is your standard stuff. Uh, and I was looking around, as you can see, some of the things I was looking for down here. This St. Vincent and the Grenadines humpback whale. This is a big deal, not because there's a humpback whale. Obviously, that's pretty cool. But this right here, take a look at the obverse. What we see is ECCB in a script font. And why that's so relevant is for... As long as I can remember, that had a image of the queen right here. And they have changed that. And that is a huge thing because, as you know, the queen is on so many of the Commonwealth coins. And here we are with a huge change after the passing of the queen. So I did some research into that. And then, yes, there was a vote in 2023 that they would go with the ECCB logo, which is crazy, and it makes me wonder if we're going to see a lot of other nations kind of file suit. It's a very, very interesting topic because there's so many nations that host the Queen on there, some of which aren't even in the Commonwealth, such as Ghana and their Leopard series. So, this being said, I wonder if this is going to be a trend that we see moving forward ECCB moving away from the Queen and more towards a logo of the Eastern Caribbean Central Bank and that is their actual script logo I know it's not very exciting uh, but at least it is something that is unique to them I also thought it'd be cool to go over my whole list of coins from beginning to end these are the six things that we measure for in our total obviously over here at the end many of the coins that we buy we buy because we like them and so they tend to do pretty well on this getting mostly in the 40s occasionally you have an elite coin going above and occasionally you have a really really bad coin uh, but yeah, we talk about the front, we talk about the back, we talk about mintage, cultural significance, collectability, and uniqueness for a total score so that every single time that you are looking over at a coin, uh, you can understand it more and you can probably figure out where the value is going to lie. We're not completely accurate in ours, but it is something that we definitely take into account uh, whenever we're looking at coins. What is the mintage? Do they have good design on the art front and back? Is it culturally significant to the nation? Is it going to be collectible? Is it a unique theme? And that's kind of what gets our total score. So as you can see here, my first one here, 45 points for the Alderney Puffin, one of my favorite coins I own still, just scored a 45. Austrian Leopold, though it's a beautiful coin, it only got a 38, and most of that is due to mintage. It was like 800 and something thousand minted. So as a collectible, it just really didn't hit there, though it scored fairly well on other areas. Robin Hood was not so great, and mostly because of the cultural significance of an English fictional character in Austria. The Wiener Neustadt of Austria is much better, and it's of the same series at 43. So there's such a variation so if any of you in the chat uh, have a coin that you know that I've done and want more clarity on, anything you have questions about, just let me know while I'm here live streaming before my kids wake up. We also have our generic versus uh, government issue bullion spreadsheet here. So if you have any questions about that, 
I can go over that with you. But basically, since January, I've been spending $100 on generic silver. On the price, the spot, premium and weight, you've got it all there. And then on the generic, or sorry, not generic, the government issued bullion, we have the same thing, what I paid, and then we put them side by side. Generic price paid, bullion price paid, premiums, the average premium, the weight in ounces, the spot average for Q1 for my orders, and then our total gains and losses, as you can see. And then we also have our bullion tracker where I've gone over and looked at the price that basically they're going for right now. And the spot price, what I paid in premium weight, and then what they're, sorry, this is over here what I bought them for. And then when I was looking up their prices online, kind of averaging, these are what they're going for now. And majority of them are positive, which is shocking. I thought that would be a year two, year three trend. But here we are within a couple of months and seeing that demand really, really is interesting. And I'm not here to say that you should expect these things. All I'm doing is looking at what are people willing to pay right now and then presenting that information because Q2 in June might be completely different. We'll see. So that'll be so much fun to look at over time. But that's kind of what we're looking at right now. We're going to go ahead and just scroll through Atmex. If you've got anything you'd like to say, please put it in the, the chat and I'll try to respond to that. I'll put something in myself. Just like that. So let's go ahead and just look through Atmex right now. See if there's anything cool, anything worth looking at. We'll go to silver because that's what we do here. And of course, I have a preference on coins. <coughs> what I tend to do um, is go into here. And this is on, let me go to available products. So to get value, I'll go to one ounce, low to high, and then just kind of look around from here. These are silver one ounce. Uh, John Wick, never been a fan, but I understand a lot of you are. I get it. Uh, and that is actually a coin as you can see right here it's minted on behalf actually I'm not sure it is it says coin up here but I don't see a government issue on this yeah it's a partner with Lionsgate so take that off the what I just said that's not a coin we have mostly rounds here in the beginning that's always the case here's the Philly that is definitely a coin and it says you can start with 20 nine dollars and 37 cents if you were to buy one right now mm, all of these are rounds nothing i'm too interested in you can see no chips those are cool i've got an ethereum all pretty boring right there to me i know maybe not to you because I like the coins personally. Rounds, rounds, rounds. If you're not familiar with this, this is the gun and rod. They have some really cool stuff in their rounds. I'm not going to lie. They uh, highlight a lot of the things that hunters and fishermen enjoy. So if you're an outdoorsman, that might be uh, a little brand that you want to get into. It's really cool. As it says here, it's an Atmex exclusive. The Gun and Rod series will feature various animals prevalent in the hunting and fishing of the world. Perfect for any outdoor enthusiast. Really cool little thing there. We also have another one from them, as you can see. There's a bass. Let's take a look at that bass. It's just an interesting one. He's got a spinner bait there in his mouth on a spinning rod. There's a duck from the same maker. It's a mallard, it looks like. Just really cool. We haven't even gotten to the coin. Okay, here's the first coin I see, and that is Nue doing a Yu-Gi-Oh! coin, which is a pop theme that is a TV show and card game, mostly targeted to kids. At least it was when its inception happened in the United States. However, there's probably adults out there that like it too. <coughs> we have... 
More rounds, more rounds, more rounds. Some bars. San Diego Zoo. This is very much like the Australian Zoo series from the Royal Australian Mint. However, this is not a coin. It is a round because it's not issued by government, though it is strikingly beautiful. As you can see, San Diego Wildlife Alliance. But what I do like about this idea is that odds are you could go to the San Diego Zoo and buy this coin in the gift shop, which is something I think is so undervalued in this bullion industry. I think it would be really cool if, let's say, a Barbados tried it. You could go to Barbados as a tourist and see Barbados Trident coins occasionally uh, around in mercantiles and shops and pick one up there actually from Barbados. It would be really cool and it would also probably mean that the people of Barbados know that that exists, which is another, another cool thing. I just realized that I was going through all of this by myself without y'all. <laughs> I'm sorry. Here we are. Now you can see the Atmex stuff. I'm on my own world. It's the second time I've live streamed, so these things are probably bound to happen. There's the Britannia right here. We're getting into our mass-produced world bullion coins. The kangaroo, which there's a new kangaroo in town with uh, his majesty on it. I watched uh, a video by Sinta Georgie over it. Beautiful video. This is an interesting one. This is a red panda, and it kind of has an odd-looking face, but it's a beautiful creature. It's one that isn't ever really done, uh, so it might be something in unique value that goes high, but the problem is this is from the Republic of Chad, and it's a red panda. Those don't live in Chad. And we see that all the time with Chad, where they go and they find something that's interesting in a world perspective, and they make a coin about it. My guess, just hoping to sell, which is, you know, business, I get it. But it does not have any relevance to your nation. And if your coins should be calling cards for your nation, then, or maybe even postcards, you should probably have some coins out there that have things relevant to you, such as they did more with their mandala series which was really half and half because yes they had african animals but they used asian print on those african animals which was kind of a merging of two cultures but i will say those have shot up in value so maybe it's a smart thing i don't know we have some more rounds we have the maple leaf the britannia the kook gotta love the kook that's a a very interesting one right there as you can see i have that right here Got the snake in hand. So the kookaburra is one that we definitely like. Um, you know what, in fact, let me just go over what we have here. So if you're seeing something and you're not sure what it is and you like it, I can kind of help you with that. So this is from the Netherlands. Uh, this is a restrike of an ancient coin. It's called the Lion from the Netherlands. Scored really high, like a 55, 56, something like that out of 60 on our 60 point scale. We have the koala right here. I believe this is a 2017 with a rooster privy. It's actually my favorite koala I've ever seen. And the reason being is because we have the koala on the ground, which is not a common thing for a koala. So it's a scene you won't likely see very often. Here we have the Congo. That is a silverback gorilla. They're known for a series on silverback gorilla. And this one in particular is very geometric, almost like polygons put together, which is interesting. It's a cool coin from a nation full of beautiful resources. <coughs> Probably the best mint overall when it comes to quality. I don't know how well that's coming across to you. This is from Comsco. This is a Chiwu. Such beautiful detail in the way that the texture kind of bounces off everything. It's just top notch. That is a Chiwu. This is one clay from South Korea. Classic Britannia. This is the old style. Not quite as ornate as these new ones, uh, but this one does have a snake privy on the rim. I ordered that as a random Britannia from Atmex, and they sent me one with a privy, so I was very, very happy about that. 
nation of Somalia, known for their elephant series, but this one happens to be a leopard. It's in their African wildlife series, low mintage, 4.9 silver, um, beautiful coin. Their coat of arms is fantastic with the double leopards holding up the shield. Gotta love it. This is from the nation of Ghana. We talked about this early, how the queen is on this coin, even though it's not a commonwealth. It's very interesting. We talked about how the EC8 is moving away from the queen, and they produce eight different coins a year. It's something that I'm wondering will be a trend or not now that the queen has passed away. This is a beautiful coin. It scored probably 55, 56, somewhere in that area. Here we have one from the Cayman Islands, rippling behind the queen, the water. You don't know if that's gonna come across on camera. Uh, by the way, I have videos over every single one of these coins just about that are detailed. So if you really like a particular coin and want to learn about it, I've got some videos out there for you. This is the Marlin. This is their flagship series. It's a blue Marlin, just gorgeous fish. Not one you really want to eat, but one that many people want to go out and catch. Really cool. This is from the Scottsdale Mint, but it is on behalf of the nation of Samoa, which is a really cool nation that puts out a lot of cool coins. And it is the Serpent of Milan. As you see the snake eating the baby, it's kind of a, a weird old Italian story. Uh, but yes, it's got the, uh, I can't remember what the name of the, the family is. It starts with a V, the Conti or something like that. Uh, but that ends up being their kind of family crest and you see it in the Alfa Romeo symbol as well if you know anything about cars you know Alfa Romeo has that exact same snake eating baby thing we just did a video over this one this is the Gutenberg absolutely fantastic coin from the nation of Niue I love it when an obverse and a reverse are both striking and this is one of those coins just a beautiful beautiful coin We've got the classic Type 2 American Silver Eagle. I like the Type 1 better, but I'm also a traditionalist, so I get it if you don't. That's okay. Here we have the Rough Tooth Dolphin. Classic out of Australia. They have different types of dolphin or porpoise. Uh, seems to be every year, and this year happens to be the Rough Tooth Dolphin. Cool coin, simple enough. Next, we've got the Quokka. We just did a video over this one as well. Really cool coin. This one has shot up in value, so you can still buy these uh, at Atmex for mid-30s, and I'm seeing them being sold online for $40 around that price point. Consistently, not that you know. I advise you just buy these and sell them because you should enjoy them, but if that's what you do, then hey, they're making money. We just talked about the Kookaburra. It's a classic classic coin this one's got Charlie on it King Charles uh, and yes I did verify that these birds are known to go and catch snakes and eat them usually smaller ones they'll beat them against a rock or a, a tree so when we get to uh, accuracy of the artwork on this it will score high this is an interesting one the nation of Gibraltar got into the silver bullion game a year or two ago and they came out with the War Elephant series, and this is highlighting Hannibal's taking of um, Rome, as he was Carthaginian. He was coming from Carthage, North Africa, and they do believe, many experts, that Gibraltar was the landing spot where he got his elephants from North Africa up to Southern Europe. An interesting one. This is from the Native American Mint. This is the Sovereign Nation of the Sioux, the Lakota tribe, I believe. And this is the War Chief. Low mintage, cool Americana coin. Sorry if the camera's not doing too hot right now. We have a Inukshuk maple leaf. This would be an Olympic variety of the Vancouver Olympics. Pretty cool. Well, we got a question here in the chat. Is it good to buy silver or should I buy gold? I like silver more than gold, but I don't know what to do. 
That's a great question. I like silver more than gold as well. And a lot of that has to do with price point and what I do, which is enjoy. I'm a collector. I'm not doing this necessarily for an investment. Um, I'm doing this to show a collection and to also give hope to people like you in the community because everything that you see, this is just a very small portion of what I have. I paid with $100 a month. So anything you've ever seen on my channel is a derivative of $100 a month. So is it good? Oh, Cincinnati. Hey, Nate from Cincinnati. What a guy. He just sent me a piece of mail with a piece of silver in it and I'm still smiling from it. So, Rakos, the question, would you buy gold or silver, is really dependent on what are you trying to do and why. Uh, and if that's a personal question, you can absolutely email me at cultureofcurrency.com. Uh, I'm not a financial guru. However, I have an understanding enough to know, you know, what outcomes are likely to be. I'm not a speculator to say, <coughs> excuse me, gold or silver is going to jump or whatever. Like, I'm not that guy. But I do understand the math and metrics of compound interest, of investing and all of that. And I will also out front say that all of my investments are not in this. This is just a fun hobby that holds value. Though I get it, uh, silver and gold are great places to have money in. And eventually I will probably do that too. Uh, but I want my mutual funds and all of that to be at a certain point. And for me personally, what I like to do... Uh, is get to a point where 10% of my net worth, but no more, might end up being in metals. Uh, and the reason being is, in my opinion, if the markets tank and you have money tied up in the market and that type of thing, the worst thing you do is take it out. Obviously, it's going to be a much lower value. So what we do see in a historical trend fashion is anytime the market has kind of tanked, it's taken at most 13 months to recover uh, to a feasible rate. And so if you have something like silver on hand, let's say you have a bunch of generic like this on hand, um, then that value tends to either stay where it's at or grow. And what you want to do is have enough on standby of something like gold, silver that you can liquidate that will cover your dip in the market until it restabilizes so you don't have to pull things out of your investments when they're at a low point um, and hopefully you will never have to do that so that's a thing that I tend to like to do is if I were to ever need to pull out from uh, a big chunk of money for a vehicle or whatever that I wouldn't have to pull it out from investments when they're low I would have uh, you know a year's salary eventually in something like gold or silver. Now, when it comes to profit, as you say, you buy silver for an investment. Absolutely, you you store wealth in silver. People, a lot of people do that to protect against inflation, which is valid. Um, but a lot of people would suggest that if you're doing it for something that's going to grow in value, that you're going to want to go with gold. It just has a higher margin when it comes to metals of consistently rising. But there's going to be blips, right? There's going to be blips where it shoots up. There's going to be blips where it goes low. You're going to have those times uh, around you. But I would say if you're looking to make money primarily, then you might just have something like this as a side thing. It, it probably doesn't need to be the majority because, for example, stock mutual funds that are S&P mirroring. If you look at their trends over a three to five year period, um, over three years, there's something like 60% positive. Over five years, they're like eight, 80, maybe even higher percent on average. And so that being said, if you look at a 10 year cycle from uh, most 10 year cycles in history, you can see that there's probably a swing of eight to 12% on those. Whereas silver and gold will you know move all over the place and you have to time the market and you have to be able to liquidate and if you liquidate over a certain amount in a certain state you get taxed as income uh, there's all kinds of things you just need to think about and that kind of stuff but that's a great question and it's honestly a question that nobody on youtube has the perfect answer for because in order to make that claim you really should sit down 
with somebody and understand exactly what they're trying to do, exactly where they are financially, what's their debt to income ratio, what are their goals. You have to have all that information. So if somebody's out there just, you know, assuming that they know every single situation that silver, gold, mutual funds, whatever, real estate is the answer, um, then run <laughs> because every human's condition is completely different and it should be tailored to you. Uh, and knowing the ins and outs of what your situation is, is the only way to get the best picture to say by X date, this is likely to happen or not. And there are no guarantees in these things, but that's great. Nate's also in there. It depends on what you buy and what price occurs. Absolutely. So yeah, and that's something to think about. I mean, most of these coins have grown in value. Not that I'm trying to sell them, uh, but that's also something that I just like, in fact, there's a study, we were talking about it earlier, I can pull up the window. There's a study that I'm tracking, I just started it in January, where I am buying $100 of generic, as you can see over here in the green, and $100 of government issued bullion over here. And so we're looking at the spot price, we're looking at the price I paid, how much I paid in premium, and the weight. You can see that I'm paying anywhere from 2 to $4 on generic, silver which is you know higher than i probably should but i wanted to get it from different sources to just kind of see what the variation was and then we go over here to our bullion that's by government issue and we see that our premiums are much higher they're probably averaging uh eight dollars or so and i have those from many different types of uh, styles so this 19 dollar premium forget me not is not necessarily a one ounce bullion coin it's a different type of coin here's a half ounce over here with the hammerhead so we want to get a variety so that you see kind of what to expect and then we're comparing them head to head generic price paid bullion generic premiums and our uh, sorry government bullion premiums the average the weight that we were able to get with roughly a hundred in each and then our spot for my orders on average over q1 being 24 and our gains and losses, which right now we're sitting at the government issued bullying being a bit better currently, and that could change, but that has to do with me at the end of Q1 looking at prices of what people are willing to pay. This doesn't mean that everybody's going to get this amount and that there's not going to be a fee if you sell on eBay versus in person. All I'm saying is looking at the metrics, what people are buying and what price point is for those coins so that you have an idea uh, when you look at your coins what someone might pay yourself and some of these went up in value in fact all of them did except for this half ounce hammerhead which is a beautiful coin by the way so that's kind of where we're at there very very good question all right let's go back to some of these this is a coin I do not like, but it is a very popular coin and apparently fairly valuable. This is a lunar coin from the Perth Mint. It's a bit larger uh, in diameter. It's got a pig on it, and the reason I don't like it is because it looks like you just drag some clip art through some pieces of grass on occasion here. Um, I mean, it's, the quality's great. Don't be crazy about that, but yeah, the artwork is just meh. So I'm not really keen on that. One day might be a giveaway coin. Who knows? Speaking of giveaways, we are almost to 4,000 watch hours. We're about uh, 300 hours short as of this morning. And right here is a coin that you will get possibly if you win our 4K giveaway. And it is the first coin I ever purchased of well it's not even really a coin it's really generic silver first piece of silver I ever purchased uh, was on Atmex and whenever I wanted to get into silver I bought this I bought I believe the uh, Pelican or not Pelican the Puffin of Alderney and some copper um, just to get my feet wet before I started this but yeah beautiful coin Racco says is it good to begin with one tenth ounce coins? My budget is limited, or should I save more and buy an ounce? <coughs> it's a great question. I assume you're talking about gold. Um, so with that being said, the one tenth obviously is gonna fit a budget better. The premiums are going to be much higher, and so that's what you're balancing. 
one ounces, you tend to have a little bit lower premium. Um, but when I think about the liquidation process, gold being at 2000, uh, sometimes you don't need to liquidate 2000. A lot of people, and, and I'll be honest with you, I don't do gold and it's not that I don't think it's great. I do. I just don't because this is my focus over here. Um, but most of the people that I see that budget on gold do start with 10th ounce and quarter ounces. In fact, I would recommend you go to Polybuck or Austrian Stacker on YouTube. They tend to do exactly that and show how it works. I'm not that guy, uh, but I can at least direct you to those guys who do it monthly-ish around that, talk about what they've done, uh, what their expectations are, all that kind of stuff, and they would be valuable for you to get in and listen on uh, because they do a really, really good job at explaining gold, which is something that I'm just not an expert in, just not my cup of tea. But it is great and something that, you know, eventually I probably will dabble in, but just not there yet. Okay, let's keep on going until we get more questions. This is a girded angelfish from the nation, Caribbean nation of Montserrat. So we just talked about how the ECA, you see how there's a queen there? This is a huge, huge thing. We have a queen here on this side of the coin. And when I go to the Atmex website right here, and let's uh, go down to this St. Vincent and the Grenadines. This is also an EC8. You will notice that they changed from the queen to this ECCB logo. And that is huge because this has always had the queen. And now that the queen has passed, a lot of nations in the Commonwealth are figuring out if they're going to carry on the tradition or not. So after Queen Elizabeth passed, this set of coins there in the EC8, which do eight coins a year, covering Antigua and Barbuda and all those little lesser Antilles nations, decided to go away from the monarchy on their imagery of these bullion coins and rather stay with their Eastern Caribbean Central Bank. That shocks me big time and it makes me wonder what's gonna happen uh, in the future. <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Nate is also sick of the British monarchs. Well, Nate, it is uh, something that we will see changing in these. And these tend to be low premium. So if you like these types of coins, uh, they're really fun to get into. In fact, I think it's the best series for collectors to get into because it's only eight coins a year. You manage to get through them uh, and they're pretty good quality. However, whoever's their designer sometimes has errors such as this. Beautiful coin. I have a video over it. It's got a girded angel fish. Uh, the problem being that this fish is from the Indo-Pacific and there are angel fish outside of the uh, banks of Montserrat in their reef structure. The French angel fish, for example, is gorgeous and yet you chose to highlight one that lives across the world. Why that is, I don't know, but there's been multiple times in EC8 coins where they have chosen the wrong species. It just doesn't make sense. Here's another one from the EC8. So this is St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Has their coat of arms. Just a cool little coin there. Once again, the queen that will now be replaced by ECCB. We have another example right here. ECCB. This is Anguilla. And take a look at this. This is a lobster, and here's another example of people getting it wrong. If you've ever been to Florida or south of Florida towards the equator, you probably realize that this lobster doesn't live there. This is a North Atlantic lobster. You'll find this from Maine all the way down to maybe North Georgia, but I doubt it. The type of lobster that you would find in Anguilla especially for culinary, are actually going to be the slipper lobster or spiny lobster. You are not going to find this guy. And one big indicator is the claws. The spiny lobster and slipper lobster don't have them like that. And the antenna actually point backwards. So odds are, as Nate just said, 
It was designed by somebody who just knows that lobsters are Caribbean food, and they absolutely are, and never paid attention to the species, which is something that I care deeply about, because if I'm from Nguia, and I find a coin that hosts my nation, and I cannot identify what I'm looking at, that's an issue for me. Reco says, what's my plan with my collection? Will I keep it or sell it in years? Uh, heck no, I am a collector and I love this stuff. This is my collection. Now there might be pieces I might sell or give away to friends or viewers like y'all um, in future giveaways, but no, my collection, uh, which is vast and covering well over you know, a hundred and probably close to 150 unique coins from all around the world. I'm going to give to my kids one day. Uh, the hope is that my YouTube channel enlightens everybody along the way of the cultural, the history significance, why these coins are important, why you should like them, why you should get them, all that kind of stuff. But it's also documenting my view on so many nations so that if I were to have an untimely demise, whatever, or, you know, 30 years after I'm dead, my grandkids could have my voice and my collection to look at as an extension of me. So it really has more to do with them. Uh, but it's something that I enjoy because when I was a little kid, I used to sit around a table with my grandmother and go through American coins looking for dates cleaning them with toothpaste because that was what she was convinced you should do uh, and then doing stamps as well so iconography of the nation of the United States was hugely important to that I learned so much history just looking at stamps and coins now that uh, I've gotten into this silver bullion I have that ability uh, on a world scale and so that's why I did it just a beautiful beautiful collection and if you're gonna start a hobby like this it's really the only hobby I know that holds value that you're not just pouring money into like a boat or anything like that do I like Geiger bars I love Geiger bars the problem is Geiger bars have a high premium and they're not technically a coin so would I buy one if I weren't just stuck on coins like this? Absolutely. Absolutely. They're great. In fact, I have a Geiger um, two ounce bar, but it's copper because I was not wanting to pay it for silver. And that's because I'm a weirdo. I'm doing this because I love the stories behind uh, the world silver more than I do the weight or the value. Like that to me is everything, which makes me weird, but that is uh, something that I do. Do I have plans to cover older world silver, maybe ones made for standard circulation? Yes, I already have videos over Mercury Dimes, over uh, you know the Colombian Exposition silver coins, which is a, the first half dollar of American circulation with a human's face on it, not Liberty or something like that. Uh, it's from 1893, I believe. Uh, I have silver coins that are Canadian, that are older um, circulation stuff. I've got American circulation stuff. I've even got uh, European. I've got a 1500s uh, Hungarian piece. So that we do on occasion buy that and have that. And most of that is because they are still coins that have a story to tell about a people, a place, a time, all that kind of stuff. That's an excellent question. Excellent question. All right. Up next, check this out. This is one of the most valuable coins. Uh, never knew it at the time. This is the first in the series from Tuvalu, a very small nation in the Pacific. And this is the Queen Anne's Revenge. It's a really cool coin. Pirates and uh, boats, always very popular. Always very popular. Uh, is Milk Spot a problem when you want to resell? Well, that's a good question, and that's hard for me to answer because I've never sold one of these coins. I have sold generic silver, and that they don't care about. I've never sold one of these, and I will say I do get milk spotting on occasion. It's more prevalent in certain mints. Um, in fact, Austrian Stacker did a video over milk spotting, quite informative, that talked about when mints are trying to 
produce quickly uh, a bunch of coins, they will put an anti-separation chemical on the dyes so that they pop out faster. And they believe that that causes impurities within the stamp. And that's where the milk spotting eventually festers. So that's his understanding. And he talked to some scientists to get that answer. But I have probably milk spotting on 5%-ish of the coins that I buy because I keep them capsuled and most of them actually come capsuled, which is great. So it's one thing people, you know, we talk about Atmex being sometimes more expensive, but almost every single coin I buy from Atmex is capsuled, which sells for $1.19 by itself. So it's something just to think about. This coin right here is valued at like $100 now. I bought it for $18 or $19. And that's one of those diamonds in the rough that you just don't know when you buy what's going to be very, very popular. Love that coin. This one here is very interesting and it has become very relevant to our time. This is Cameroon, which we know is in Africa, right? Africa is a very interesting uh, set of nations. All have unique stories. This one is particularly unique because the artwork is a traditional piece of Japanese artwork that was around, I can't remember what the period was, but I have it in my video. And you ask yourself, well, why is a Chinese emblem and historic artwork on a African coin? Well, when I did my research into that, um, things got dark quickly, but basically there's a lot going on between China and African nations when it comes to uh, mining of minerals and things like that. Uh, but even more so, for example, in Cameroon, they offered to build a, I think it was $2 billion deep dredge so that they could uh, offload freight and things like that much better. They have a malaria clinic that they tried to build in Cameroon. But the other side of the coin was on the One China policy, which would um, include Taiwan uh, and other social policies that nations like Cameroon vote on China's behalf so that China doesn't seem crazy uh, on a world stage if they go out and do something. So it's a really, really interesting story and network between why Chinese symbology ends up on African coins, but that's a video you might really want to watch if you're interested in the geopolitics. Nate says, do you have any local options? I'm lucky enough to have... <laughs> Nate... I wish I had local options. So there's just, I mean, there might be, I don't really get out a lot, to be honest. I'm kind of a hermit. Um, but from what I have seen in my immediate location, no, there's not a whole lot out there. Uh, and it's something that, <coughs> excuse me, I'm hoping one day will change. Uh, in fact, I'm hoping this whole idea of world bullion changes and becomes so much more of a collector entity that we see them all over the place and gives people the ability to stumble upon these in gift shops of hotels all over the place so that your wealth can be preserved in the way that you like best. Clinical consulting centers, old world silver coins, it's a better way to go. They are more expensive, they are already proven value, and they will continue to increase. That's a great point. Yeah, old world stuff from a collector value, especially if you have a piece worth getting graded and that type of stuff, you can see a huge, huge thing on that. So, yeah, that is uh, a far profit. That That is a, a good point. These are unproven for the most part because they're so new. Most of my coins come from a couple years ago. You get a coin that's 300 years old and it's still very, very valuable and going up in value. That's a pretty good trajectory. Pretty good trajectory. Connecticut. Hope it's not too cold up there. It's getting hot down here in Texas, so hopefully the weather is pleasing to you up in Connecticut. That's awesome. Connecticut. All right, moving on. Here is a very, very common series. 2021, this is Somalia, as you can see. And we have their elephant series. This is one that uh, I really enjoy. However, in the description, they say that this is an acacia tree, which I know you can't see it here, but you can see it in my video uh, where I actually take some good camera footage of it and realize that that's not an acacia tree because acacia trees have these patterns of leaves that kind of offset. They're small leaves. They go like a mimosa tree out. Um, and these are very big 
foliar spread leaves. Uh, and these are made by the Bavarian mint, I believe, or one of the European mints. And that's what I found is that this tree matches the trees um, in that area of the world. And this is likely what the artist did, which, you know, it's neither here nor there. I get it. Um, but it's one of those things that, you know, was it a calling card to, because in fact, the Bavarian mint does a tree series. Was it a calling card to say, hey, this is kind of like a mint mark for us, or is it an actual error? I don't know, but it's interesting. Just something that I, I picked up on. Still a just gorgeous coin. Here we have Barbados, which is my favorite nation uh, of silver coins in the Caribbean. They have a ton of different themes. They have low mintage stuff, and they are pretty affordable overall, usually uh, $5 or less over spot. Love them, uh, and their standard flag bear in a trident is one of the coolest ever. Here we have Rwanda. This is their lunar series. This is going to be a mosaic. That's what their lunar series is known for. However, they have so many cool coins. And if I were only to collect one nation in Africa, uh, as far as their silver goes, it would definitely be Rwanda. They're hefty, they're 40 millimeter like an American silver eagle, um, and they just have the highest quality. Beautiful nation overall too. If you know the history that we cover in our videos of the genocide that happened there um, and how they've rebounded from that with their ethnocentric museum uh, and the ability to create a culture where we care more about the similarities of each other rather than the differences, uh, it has turned everything around in that nation to the point to where they are growing uh, from an economy standpoint where giant clubs of soccer over in Europe are going to play games over in Rwanda. And we're talking like PSG, some of the biggest uh, clubs there are. So very, very interesting. Here we have one of my favorites. This is the Hokusai Great Wave. So if you know of the Edo period of Japan, you'll know that they basically closed the borders of Japan for like 300 years and nobody got in, nobody got out. And so they had their own culture just festering in Japan. Really cool. And this is an iconic series from the 50 or 150, I don't remember, views from Mount Fuji. Mount Fuji's kind of in the back right over here. Very, very popular piece of art but this is from the nation of Fiji which is not Japanese but they have huge huge historical ties to trade and things like that and so Fiji highlights their um, geopolitical and uh, I guess you would say economic ties in a series that highlights Asian themes which they are just fantastic here we have a Rum, or not Rum Runner, this is the HMS Bounty. Her Majesty's ship is HMS Bounty. And this is the ship that Captain James Cook would have used to discover this, the Cook Islands. And I don't mean discover, like, as the first person. We had people there from, uh, you know, the Polynesians and all that kind of stuff. But we did have the first European exploration by James Cook. Really cool, iconic coin beautiful rippling in the background, one that I think everybody should have. Another example from the Nation of Rwanda, their animal series. This one has the pelican. My first was the okapi, which is a really cool animal, but they have this rugged Africa, and then they'll host the feature animal over here. Same obverse. 30th anniversary of the kookaburra, which means we get the kookaburra on first, or sorry, on both sides. Really cool one. Probably my favorite kookaburra to date. Just gorgeous. A highly undervalued series is the Australian cheetah. Uh, sorry, not Australian cheetah. The series is actually the Australian zoo series. This is Royal Australian Mint. This one happens to be a cheetah. However, they do all kinds of animals and they're just fantastic. They're well done. Um, Excellent artistry, beautiful way the light plays with them, just solid. One that I think is a undervalued series. Here we have Bex Mexico, sorry. That is going to be the Libertad. 
a very high value coin. When I first started getting into this, this was about the same price as the uh, American Silver Eagle. And for some reason, it has shot up. And I know it's a pretty coin, but I don't know. It just never made sense to me, the value being pushed that much. Uh, and if you don't know, one thing that I love about this is you see these two mountains in the background? My video goes over this, but there's a historic tradition behind those two mountains and it's a love triangle where there's two people that love this girl and there's a whole thing that happens but basically they both die and their bodies form mountains it's a it's a beautiful story but not for today's video here we have another maple you see the nook shook here and so that's vancouver olympics this one is the thunderbird really cool it's got all the maple leaves dancing over here in the background uh, probably my favorite maple that I've ever seen. This is the Lunar Year of the Rat. This is the first in the cycle of the Lunar Series. The rat comes first because as they're crossing the river to get to the Jade Palace, the rat, who is cunning, jumps on the back of the ox, and then right before they get to the banks of the Jade Palace, the rat jumps off the nose of the ox, and so therefore... It was the first in the series, the ox being second because it was a strong swimmer and so on and so forth. But this one is from England. I know you can't see it, but there is just a gorgeous background on this that you have to kind of hold it to see in the eye. Uh, but one of my favorites, it's hard to make a rat look pretty, but they did a good job. One of the newest players of the game, Malta. This is the Golden Eagle. Uh, Maltese coins, surprisingly not too expensive for the most part, uh, and that's mostly because they're mass-produced. These are fairly high mintage coins, um, but just gorgeous overall, high ornamentation. Malta is one of the coolest histories uh, of any nation due to its geography, where it sits, and how many people have controlled that land over time. It just makes it such a melting pot of stories. Really cool coin there. Another African coin. As you can see, we have the rosettes in the background. This is going to be Ghana. And it's another of the leopards. It's a leopard I really like. It's a little bit more traditional in its uh, artistry. Here we go with the classic wedge-tailed eagle. Many people think that this is uh, much like the kookaburra that is holding the snake from this year. That is going to be from Australia. So limited mintage, mintage, excuse me, tends to hold its value quite nicely. My favorite series currently is right here from Australia where they highlight the different states. Just look at all the elements, beautiful features. This one is Queensland. Just gorgeous. So every year um, for the past couple of years, they put out a coin that has the symbology of another area of Australia. Um, so this side has a lot of the themes and the important features of that land. We see, for example, the merino wool from that sheep right there uh, as a huge textile industry focus and that type of thing, but just gorgeous. Um, I will say that I missed out on the first in this series and that is the one that got away from me. If I ever had the opportunity to buy that coin, uh, it's the one that I think I, I long for the mo most that I never got. So it's the first in this series. Over here we have the Sumatran elephant. Beautiful, this is once again from that Australian Zoo series, just like the cheetah. Do a fantastic job. Australia, or not Australia, excuse me, America. This is the standard ASE, the one I like more of the two. It just seems more official. I kind of like the seal there. Here we have a tiger. This is from Laos. Beautiful building here. This was a fun video to make. I didn't know anything about Laos, uh, but it was a fantastic video to make. And this coin trying to ignite some passion on the reintroduction of tigers to their native land in southeast China. 
or sorry, not Southeast China, Southeast Asia. <laughs> China would like it to be Southeast China. Let's be honest. Another coin I'm not very uh, in love with, but it's expensive. It has value. And this is a Lunar Dog from the Perth 2018. Once again, I just feel like they had some clip art and dropped little tufts of grass on occasion instead of making it into a complete scene. Uh, but not one that I'm keen on. So one day I might I might sell that one or get, give that away to a viewer or whatever. I don't know. This is one of the coolest mass-produced coins in the market. This is Comsco, which is South Korea. These are Phoenix. So we see the double Phoenix there, one with the pearl in the mouth. It's just gorgeous. And then we have the flying Phoenix on this side. I don't know if my camera does it justice, but it's just gorgeous over here. They have the security feature that changes what it says based on what lights on it. They're the ones that kind of started that. Now we see them on the Britannia and other things. Probably the most beautiful mint that I know of. Them in the Pressburg. Speaking of Pressburg, here we have right here the Equilibrium. Let me see if I can spin this in a way that shows off how the rippling works. We have a yin yang on this side. We turn it over. We have the queen, and there's a lot of cool details that my camera's not picking up right now. But this was in a series where they have the Terra, the Magnum Opus, all kinds of things. Just gorgeous coins. Clinical says silver coins from Malta with low mintage are the ones from the religious order. They're amazing coins, especially the way they tone. Interesting. I would love to see an example of those. I've only seen a couple of coins from Malta. I have two of them. In fact, my next coin is from Malta. This is a mass-produced one, and it's actually made by the Pressburg Mint too, on behalf of Malta. And the reason I know that is this really interesting capsule they come in. See how they have the double ridge right there? That's something that the Pressburg Mint is known for. So yeah, this is the Maltese Cross, and this one is a high mintage variety, but I will say that the Maltese Cross is also religious as it goes back to a time with the Knights Hospitallers and all that kind of stuff uh, and even the Templars when they were a religious order that was a safeguard for them there you see the Central Bank of Malta but Malta's in general one of the most religious areas in fact I want to say it was only like 10 years ago or something where divorce was legal in their um, area because they're so Catholic, basically. So I want to say it was about 10 years ago, but I remember that being shocking that a European nation just got to that point, not to you know say that's good or bad, but that was just interesting of how traditional and devout they were. Here is a koala. This is uh, a couple of years ago, maybe last year, I don't remember. But the koala series is a very popular one. This is a newer variety, we know, because it doesn't have the giant mirrored rim on both sides it's soft and it's got a subtle texture to it which is something i really like and they do an absolutely great job uh changing the font up and that type of thing we have the coat of arms this is a really cool mass-produced coin because it just screams of england um so if you want one that you know, feels like the royal seal and all that, where here it is. It's fantastic. I think it definitely is a representation of the monarchy. And so if that's what you're looking for, it's kind of hard not to have this one. The last coin today we're going to look at is right here. This is another one from that favorite series in Australia. We have uh, in this one, New South Wales. So it's got the kangaroo. It's got some flowers and things that are important there. We have some more merino sheep for their wool. Just gorgeous. Just gorgeous. So that's what we have. Any other questions? Uh, if you are just now joining, I will say that this right here, once again, is going to be a giveaway. This is the first piece of silver I ever bought uh, whenever I was looking into getting into this a few years back. And we are almost at 4,000 watch hours. We're about 300 hours away 
So if you're listening, just put my playlist on repeat so we can get across the line because once we do that, uh, we'll be giving away silver monthly. 10% of whatever YouTube pays me in my watch ads will go back to you. I'll be buying things on your behalf. So the hope is that it will give viewers the opportunity to hold some of the things you see and develop the love for <coughs> excuse me, this hobby uh, as well as just come along a journey of learning why these stories, these uh, images are so important around the world. So that is where we're at. Um, but I'm going to wrap up here today because I've got my little kids waking up and I need to go be dad. So I thank you so much. I'm sorry at the beginning there was some technical difficulties. This is the second time I've ever streamed and it's all new to me. But I thank you so much as always for joining us. If you'd like to be a channel member uh, and get some of those perks, email me if you have questions about it, culture of currency at gmail.com. And if not, we'll see you in the next one. So thank you. And as always, please remember to stay classy and current with the culture.